Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be evaluating a sum given another sum. We have the algebraic expression x squared over yz plus y squared over xz plus z squared over xy equals 3 and we're going to evaluate x plus y plus z. Now I have to tell you that x, y, z are different numbers here because if they're not the same if they're the same then this trick is not going to work. Okay, so at least we're not always going to find a numerical value for x plus y plus z. Okay, we've done this before. Uh, do you remember? It was backwards. All right, great. So let's go ahead and use our expression. Uh, let's make a common denominator. I'm going to multiply this by x, so that gives me x cubed, and then y cubed, and then z cubed. I'm going to divide all of that by the common denominator x, y, z, and set it equal to 3. Great. Now, let's go ahead and cross multiply here. x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed equals 3xyz and then let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and I'm going to ask you a question does this look familiar it should if you dealt with algebra if you dealt with factoring with cubics uh, you must have seen this so now we're going to manipulate this expression so we're going to factor it to factor it I'm going to take a look at the x cubed plus y cubed first that is the sum of two cubes and you know we have a special way of writing that right I'd like to write it as x plus y to the third power minus 3xy multiplied by x plus y. Remember when we were solving cubic equations with the formula, this is the identity we were using. Pretty much the Cardano, Del Ferro, Ferrari, Tartaglia, whoever's formula you want to call it, this was the method that we used. So this is my sum of cubes, and then, of course, the rest follows, plus z cubed, and then minus 3xyz and this is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and uh, make it uh, more factorable obviously. Uh, our goal is to make it uh, fully factorable. I'm going to put these two together because those are both cubes and I want to take advantage of sum of two cubes. So let's go ahead and do it this way. Put these two together first and then the rest and while I'm doing this yeah, I could probably take another step for this one. Let me go ahead and just rearrange this first. And then I'm going to use the sum of two cubes. Remember a cubed plus b cubed. a plus b, right? Multiply by a squared minus ab plus b squared, which is z squared in this case. That is the first part. And then the rest, uh, notice that negative 3xy is a common factor. And inside we have x plus y plus z, which is really cool because now I have the x plus y plus z in both of these expressions, which means I can factor out x plus y plus z. If I do that, if I take out x plus y plus z, this is what I get. This is what I get. x plus y quantity squared. Let's go ahead and factor. Let's go ahead and factor. Uh, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. x squared plus... 2xy plus y squared. If you go ahead and distribute it, minus xz minus yz plus z squared. And then I have minus 3xy. Let's go ahead and put that in there and set it equal to 0. Here's what we would like to do. x plus y plus z is going to stay together. And then the rest of the expression is going to look like this. x squared, y squared, and z squared. And now I have 2xy minus 3xy, which is going to give me negative xy, negative xc, and negative yz. And this product is equal to 0. Now, we can we find x plus y plus z from here? We have to take care of the other factor. But the other factor is something that can be written as a sum of squares. Can I just skip that part and give it to you real quick? Or if you just think about it, if you add x plus y quantity squared, x plus z quantity squared, and y minus z quantity squared, you're going to get twice this expression. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply that by 1 half, put the 1 half here, and put the x plus y plus z here. So when you multiply by 1 half, you're going to get this expression right here. And now by setting this equal to 0, notice that this, if x and y, z are different, this is not going to be 0. Therefore, this has to be 0, which means x plus y 
plus z equals zero and this brings us to the end of this video i well, thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye